Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl back with another one and we are in the makeshift CES hub since it's all virtual this year in 2021. I thought I'd make a very quick video on some of the highlights, some of the best in show. I'll try to keep it nice and short so you guys don't have to browse through everything. And of course, links to all articles and all the info is down below. This year being virtual has actually been a slight blessing in disguise as we've added a new little guy to the fam. Let me go grab him. Just introducing Link to the fam. Hopefully he loves tech as much as I do. So I'm gonna put him down and let's go through some of the best in show for CES 2021. And one of the biggest highlights of the showroom floor is typically the LG booth. They've got the crazy floor to ceiling TV wall. They've tried to recreate that virtually this year. So I got to give a big shout out to them for sponsoring my CES coverage. Let's kind of go through what they've released. So you can see they've arranged it into four separate virtual showrooms. So the first, for example, is the LG Gram, a laptop that I always check out. And it's actually cool that LG is hosting a bit of a virtual giveaway and you can win some of the tech that they're introducing or releasing at CES. So I'll leave, of course, links below. The LG Gram, for example, it now comes in a couple different sizes. So the new one is a 16 inch and it's actually the world's lightest. They actually have the Guinness Book of Records lightest 16 inch laptop. They also still come in the 14 and 17 inch form factors. I'm typically a fan of the 17. I love the large screens, but they have also updated the screen aspect ratio to be 16 by 10. Hardware wise, they're also upgrading to the latest 11th gen Intel processors, and it also comes in a two in one. And obviously all of these laptops will be coming into the studio, but this is your first sneak peek to their monitors, which have always been my favorites. And I think gaming setups, a lot of us have spent time indoors either in 2020, I'm sure that will continue this year. Gaming setups are becoming even more popular. So they've released three new monitors. They're releasing a 34 inch ultra wide with ultra low latency, the 32 GP850. It's an IPS panel with a one mil response time. But I think the highlight here is the 27 inch, it's the GP950, and that's compatible with the latest gen consoles. So the Xbox Series S, Xbox Series S as well. Maybe even compatible with this guy, the PlayStation 5. You'll get the full benefits of HDMI 2.1. So if those games can support say 120 FPS up to 8K gameplay, combining it with that monitor, you'll get the best of both worlds. They're also releasing a 40 inch ultra wide and this one has a 5K resolution. So that's the most amount of pixels they've had in an ultra wide monitor to date and to their ultra fine monitors. This is actually LG's first OLED monitor. So a lot of hype has been around this one. It's a 32 inch panel and it's in 99% of the DCI-P3 color space. So I think this is a perfect option for Mac users. As someone that doesn't wanna drop $7,000 on say the Pro Display XDR, I think this one will be perfect. OLED panels are usually some of the best. And once again, this is another upgrade that I am eyeing this year. Lastly from LG, let's quickly talk about the Cinebeam. A lot of you know, I'm a huge fan of 4K ultra short throw projectors. I've got one set up right behind me here. So the Cinebeam this year still is 4K and it gets an image size up to 3 hundred inches. So that's absolutely massive. Behind me right now, we've got a hundred inches. I honestly don't think I have a wall big enough to fit something of that size, but super, super dope. So it's a dual laser projector and it's also got a 2 million to one black level contrast ratio. So expect some pretty crazy picture quality. Once again, that is the third upgrade coming and it's actually coming sometime late January. So expect a new tour featuring that projector. And the last thing from LG, a bit more of a concept, but it definitely generated the most amount of buzz. It's their new rollable phone. And that actually means the screen or the actual phone can roll in and out. And it's actually the second tease of that phone. And imagine a device, say the size of a normal smartphone, you can actually bring it out further to create more of a tablet, roll it back when you don't need it. So that is super cool. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. And LG actually claims it's more than a concept. We'll be able to buy it some point this year. So maybe the hype of folding phones last year in 2021, it might be the rollable phone. More unrollable phones, TCL actually released their own version as well. So this one actually goes from a 6.7 inch phone to a 7.8 inch tablet. And that can be done with one tap of your finger. So it'll be interesting to see the mechanism that works that rollable action. 
In addition to the rollable phone, they also announced a 17-inch printed OLED scrolling display that can be unfurled and features a 100-inch color gamut display. So imagine something small like a roll of paper and that can get up to 17 inches. Maybe this is our path into the Harry Potter world. We'll all be holding pieces of parchment except inside there'll be screens. I'm definitely down for that. Moving on to Samsung, they released a ton of stuff as well. I think their big highlight this year is their 110 inch micro LED TV. So you can imagine right behind me, 100 inches like I mentioned, that of course is just a projector screen. Having a TV bigger than that and having a full LED panel is kind of nuts to think about. So you still get all of the benefits of LED panels. So of course, extremely high contrast ratios, nice and deep colors. Of course, it's way brighter than a projector and it's pretty much near bezel-less and it's coming out sometime this spring. So keep your eyes posted. I can expect this will be very, very expensive, but that's the price you pay for having a 110 inch LED panel. And something that caught my eye this year, maybe more than most years, because we spend a lot more time indoors, they're releasing their new bespoke refrigerator design. Obviously something a bit different, but this is more modern, it's more minimal. In some of the demos, I actually saw that you could pick colors of each of the panels. There was one that was orange. Samsung, if you watch this video and you wanna send me an orange fridge, I will install it without any questions. Samsung also released more home tech, but they took it to the next level. They have a robot called the Bot Care. So typically when you think of robots, droids, say if you're a Star Wars fan, they're usually pretty helpful. I think we're kind of going into that direction and looking at this release, this robot can help do dishes. It can vacuum your floor. It's got its own internal camera to monitor pets so it can actually feed them if you need or even turn lights on at night. I don't know if that's getting too creepy to have this thing kind of buzzing around your house, but I guess that's the future. Moving on to some laptop stuff. So we saw that Acer came out with their new AMD based Chromebook. So AMD has just been crushing the game this year. So I think these will be great options for people both at school or even at work that just need the basics to kind of get by. We're gonna switch on to some automotive stuff. I'm always a big auto guy and I find myself when I'm at the showroom floor, I'm always in the auto hall. So Panasonic came out with the new automotive artificial intelligence heads up display. It's definitely the best implementation of a heads up display that I've seen as it is tracking and changing in live time. Moving on to the Vision S, and this was the concept car from Sony that kind of made its appearance last year. It is now fully testing in public roads, both in Australia and Europe. So this is really interesting. I think the world of autonomous cars and electric cars are just taking off. So just like the rumored Apple car, we'll probably see cars from Sony. Samsung, LG, and just like having all those choices for smartphones, you'll now have those choices for cars. Another cool car concept was the Cruise Origin, and that's a subsidiary of General Motors. Imagine a self-driven, all-electric, shared vehicle. So it's essentially like a taxi or an Uber, except in the shape of a box, doesn't have a driver, kind of goes around, picks people up, and can drop you off at different locations. Last little car update, I thought this was maybe one of the coolest because it's actually really practical. It's the MBUX Hyperscreen from Mercedes. It's a 51 inch OLED panel that will fit somewhere, or I guess in the main dash of your car. So it stretches the entire way. You know, it's fully interactive, has eight cores, 24 gigs of RAM, so more than most laptops. So, so overkill, but super dope looking. And I wonder if you could potentially retrofit something like this. We've got a Mercedes SUV at home. It's obviously older. I think it's 2012. Upgrading the screen inside to have this hyper screen. That'd be pretty cool. And we'll end the highlights in the health and lifestyle space. So this is the Active Plus Smart Mask by AirPop. And obviously as masks are becoming the norm, we all have to wear them these days. This is bringing a Fitbit style fitness tracker to a mask. It'll monitor the filter that's installed into the mask and that's designed to block dust, allergens, particles. It also has a limited lifespan. So 
you have to throw that out, hopefully it doesn't cost too much money. Another cool mask though that we saw was from Razer and this is called Project Hazel. So this has a built-in N95 respirator, but it also has a clear transparent design so you can actually see what people are saying. I know that's sometimes hard with a fully closed off mask. And it actually has its own voice amp. So it's got a built-in mic and amplifier. So when you talk, it won't sound muffled. It also has these cool LED rings. So if you want to look like Bane when he's at a disco party, so that is super dope. And that has just kind of been all of my highlights of CES 2021. And I know this year has been a weird one, a virtual CES. I've been going to Vegas, I think for seven, almost eight years since I've started my YouTube channel. Just not being there is a bit weird, but hopefully next year we'll be back and showing you guys all of this cool tech in person. I'm heading back to my puppy training. Link is all tuckered out, tired of me talking for the past little bit, so I'm gonna take a nap with this guy. Hopefully you enjoyed all of my CES coverage. And depending on when this video drops, Samsung is also announcing their new S21 flagship. We've also got that here, so make sure you sub to the channel if you already haven't, and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.